Hello everyone, ESBR Boxing, and we are back, myself and Paul Kelly, to, well it's a regular feature, but we're here to preview another week, another another event taking place in Britain, actually we're going to be this week, um, I'm not going to give too much away just yet, but just to say, you know, it's a pleasure to see everyone, pleasure for you to tune in back in. Paul, spin to you first, how are you doing sir? Yes, thanks Elliot, I'm all good mate, I'm all good, I'm looking forward to another um, exciting weekend of boxing after a brilliant, brilliant weekend on UK Shores last weekend too. Absolutely, absolutely. And as you say, yeah, we are so we are in we are in well we are in Britain, we're in England, um we're in Nottingham. Um so we're gonna obviously the event that's taking place this Saturday, um, the matchroom card, um, which we're gonna go through. So three fights we're gonna take. We're gonna take obviously the main event, uh chief support and some undercard an undercard fight as well. Um without well, I suppose you know it's not gonna ruin it anyone any anyone sort of surprise here to say that the main event is obviously Lee Wood versus Mitsu Lara. And we're gonna go straight to you, Paul, who's gonna take us through that. That event, which is for the WBA World Featherweight title. Yeah, thanks, mate. Really looking forward to this one. Um, I don't know about you. This has kind of crept up on me, I think, a, a little bit. But um, no, it's, it's a fight that I'm really, really looking forward to. I should say, the WBA now super featherweight um, championship on the line, obviously, after Leo Santa Cruz vacating and Lee Wood being upgraded to the super champion. So, yeah, just a quick rundown of both fighters. They kind of really need no introduction. I think everyone kind of knows who they are. But Lee Woods, 26 and 2 with 16 KOs, 34 years old, orthodox fighter, but 5 foot 7, 67 and a half inch reach. Um, and you look at his opponent, Maurizio Lara, obviously a Mexican, 24 years old, um, orthodox, 25, 2 and 1 with 18 stoppage victories. He's also 5 foot 7. Um, so, you know, kind of similar dimensions there. But yeah, this is a fight, as you mentioned, for the WBA Super um, and then Featherweight Championship of the World. I think, I'll come to you with a couple of questions in a, in a second, Elliot, but I think this is fair to say that, you know, in the Featherweight division, these are probably two of the biggest punchers. Um, I think that's, I think, I think most people would agree with me there. You look at, you know, you look at Lee Wood particularly and his last few wins are just incredible. You know, you've got the, You've got the Michael Condon win, the Kanju win, the Reese Mould win, um, even the David Oliver Joyce, Jazza Dickens, all those type kind of wins as well. Ryan Doyle, you know, he's on a, he's on a great winning streak here, and he's just gone from strength to strength. Um, Maurizio Lara obviously came in over as an underdog. Nobody knew who he was fighting Josh Warrington. Absolutely pasted him about the ring. <laughs> um, then obviously had the rematch, a draw with a clash of heads and all all that. But yeah, frightening puncher too. So Elliot, just my kind of question for you. I've got two for you. Um, first of all, Lee Wood's the underdog here, um, despite being the champion. Do you think he can pull off the upset? And second of all, is there any need for any judges here? Because I don't know about you, but I for one don't see this going past halfway. Uh, thank you, Paul. Thank you for that detailed and eloquent breakdown. Um, I, as usual, um, offering you know, offering insight, offering insight to all of us, talking through the records there. I um. Well, let's let's take the questions in reverse. Do I think it'll go to judges? No, I don't. I don't see it going to the judges. Um, can Lee Wood pull off a surprise? You know what? I actually think Lee Wood can. I think like this style, um, Lara's style suits Wood more. Like, and let's be honest. Like the last time he fought uh, against Conan, I don't think you know I'm saying anything contentious here. When I think he was losing that fight, and I think Conan's style just was kind of difficult. It's difficult for Lee Wood to kind of catch him. Obviously, he did catch him eventually in the end. But I feel like Lara will obviously, will obviously come forward more and be more there for him to kind of exchange with. So, yeah, I actually think Lee Wood can. Lee Wood can actually uh, spring an up to here, like you say as well. Like the, the people he's fought, obviously had that loss against Jazza Dickens. Jazza Dickens is a good fighter as well. So I don't look at that. That was obviously a close, was a majority decision, wasn't it? I think that one. So it's like, again, you look at that and go, actually, that's a credit to him. Jazza Dickens is a tough opponent. So I don't come through a close fight like that. Kanju, Conlon as well, coming through those guys. So I actually think he can. I mean, I know a lot of people are saying that Lara all kind of blots him, <laughs> blitz him out, but I think, again, like he did with Warrington, like Warrington's one of those guys that, I don't know, I think by the time Lara got to him as well, I think Warrington had that run, didn't he? That exceptional run um, where he came through, um, you know, and came when he won the title and came through there. But I think almost in a way, it's kind of, he's kind of not the Warrington that he used to be, if that makes sense either. Um, and he has shown sort of susceptibility and, and fragility. So, yeah, I think, um, yeah, I'm talking about obviously that Selby Frampton run, Galahad run, but then obviously Lara seems to have got to him after that. So, yeah, I think I think Lee Woods is a different proposition. I think Lee Wood can actually win this. I'd love to see him win this. Um, yeah, but I don't think he'll go to the judges. But I, I, my heart would say Lee Wood KO. Um, 
and I'm not listening to anything else. So <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I absolutely love that from you. I'm, I, for one, agree with you. Um, for anyone that hasn't checked it out, I've done an interview with Lee Wood um, pre-fight. So have a, have a look at that on our channel. And he was speaking about the fight. And I had to agree with him, you know, despite being the underdog and stuff, Lara is quite reckless. We saw, you know, he nearly got stopped himself in one of his recent fights against, you know, not really a, an, an opponent of note. So he can definitely be hurt. He's there to hit just as long as Lee Wood hits him first rather than getting hit first. I think, yeah, I'm, I agree. I think I could see Lee Wood pulling off the upset here. Um, obviously, decent, decent night's action. and um, That was the main event. There are a few good fights on the undercard. And Elliot, I believe you're going to take us through one of the undercard fights, which is a British title fight. I am indeed. I'm indeed. Thank you, Paul. So, yeah, as you say, we go to, to the British title fight, which is taking place on the undercard there, which is between Dalton Smith and Billy Alling, Allington. Um, so just to go through, as, as you said before, like, you know, we like to do a, a sort of obviously people watching this are kind of familiar with, with Dalton Smith to a certain degree, but we'll go through a tale of the tape. So he's 25 years old, um, 13 and 0 record with 10 KOs. Um, he's been British champion a couple of times. Um, recently came out for a fight against Casey Benjamin, where he was his recent defence, but he won it against Samo Mason. That was in Sheffield uh, with a sixth round KO and defended it against Benjamin uh, with a decision win. Um, but he had obviously he had held it before and then vacated, then, then won it back. Billy Orlington is 28. He's got a record of 10 and 1. And what is surprising is it's 10 and 1 and 4. Four draws on a record of 15 fights is outrageous. Um, I mean, looking at it, I mean, one of them was due to a uh, due to an accidental head clash, but the others have actually gone to, to, to the ref or to, to judging you know, three times for three draws. Um, he comes into this, his orthodox fight at five foot nine, but he comes into this really with, um, again, unsurprisingly a draw. But he's uh, he's got a couple of okay notable wins against fighters with like 11 and four record, 10 and seven um, sort of guys. But I think. To be perfectly honest, this is a step up, a massive step up for him. Um, so the question I'm really going to ask you, Paul, is, and you asked me this uh, the other week with, with a preview we did, um, is really whether this opponent for Dalton Smith, given where, who he's fought recently, is a step down. And do you see it being a routine defence? And if so, possibly by KO? Or do you think that over the 12-round uh, distance, some way, Wallington might go, might go the full distance? Yeah, thanks for that breakdown, Elliot. In short, I say this as a routine victory for Dalton Smith. Um, second defence of his British title, um, obviously after winning it, as you mentioned. Last time out, don't get me wrong, Casey Benjamin put up a great fight. That was a really good fight. It was quite close, but Dalton Smith did do enough, um, I think, to win the fight. Allington, not the same level as the last couple of fighters, in my opinion, that Dalton Smith fought. However, it's a natural progression for him. He's won the Southern Area title. He won the English, you know, next step British. So a fair play to him. He's, he's getting his shot and you can't say that he doesn't really deserve it, you know. Um, but if I'm looking at the resumes and the performances, I think Dalton Smith is levels above um, Billy Ollington, um, if I'm just being honest. I'm expecting a comprehensive win here. A mid, you know, a mid-round KO, I think, for um, Smith. And yeah, I think 2023 could potentially be a massive year for Dalton Smith. We're still calling him a kind of prospect. I don't, I'm not too sure, but you know, I could see him definitely claiming at least a European title by the end of the year. Um, I don't think it'll happen this year, but imagine a fight in the you know in the future with him and Adam Azim, obviously both floating about it, super lightweight, and that could be an all you know that could be a an all British world title fight in twenty twenty four even um, something something like that. But yeah, I expect all uh, Dalton Smith to win this kind of convincingly um, in the early to mid rounds. Yeah, I think it's going to be around four, five, six for a stoppage here for um, the Sheffield man. Um, thank you very much for that, Paul. I was just thinking we, we last week we did Adam Azim, didn't we? And, it, and he's obviously in the same division as you mentioned there. Um, we come to Dalton Smith, and you said that last week that you know currently you back Smith against Adam Azim. But I was going to say Smith that you know against some other names in that division. Obviously, Smith's ranked depending on which rankings you want to look at. So around sort of five on five, four, five, or six on the on on different ones. So I mean, British wise, would you have Dalton Smith beating Ahara Davis? Obviously, Davis is fighting Ritson. Yeah. Do you think that's a fight that he could he could prevail in? And do you also yeah. have him sort of above Ritz and above Eubank, above those guys? Yes, I do. I do. I really, really rate Dalton Smith. I know um yeah, I know Greg will agree with me as well. I, I Dalton Smith was one of my, you know, ones to watch a few years back and I think he's a brilliant if you still call him a prospect. I suppose he's only twenty five, but thirteen fights. I think he's exciting. He's kind of got everything. And um yeah, I love watching Dalton Smith, I think. In time he will probably be the best super lightweight in Britain. 
No, I, I, yeah, I'm not gonna, not gonna argue with their Paul at, at all. I'm actually gonna agree with you. Uh, it is an exciting fight. I suppose the problem you've got, I suppose, like we said, is you know, 13, 13 fights is that kind of difficult stage now. Like we step up European, try and match him, keep him sort of going, and, and showcase that talent. But talking about showcasing talent, we're gonna come back to you here um, for the last fight of the of the card. We're gonna focus on, and I believe it's focusing on a fighter who is probably, as we speak now, situated on the same landmass as yourself. Paul, please take us through it. Yeah, you're absolutely. You're absolutely right, um, Elliot. Of course, we are talking about the Irish sensation Gary Cully, and he is fighting Wilfredo Flores on this undercard. Um, quick tale of the tape, as we as we always do. Gary Cully's fifteen and zero with nine KOs, twenty seven years old. As we mentioned, Irish. He's he's a southpaw, the diva, isn't he? He goes by nickname, and despite being a hundred and thirty five pound fighter, he is six foot two, um, which is absolutely obscene. <laughs> Looking at Wilfredo Flores, he's a ten zero and one, so undefeated himself. Five KOs um, in his fights. He's he's USA based fighter. I'm um, thirty three years old, so a few years on Cully. Um, and you know, there there is a title on the line here. However much um credibility you give to that belt, but kind of I think you'll probably agree. I think we'll both agree that this will probably be you know another Gary Cully win and probably another Gary Cully KO. But I just kind of wanted to ask you, you know, where does he go from here? Like, where do you rate Gary Cully? Because I know last time out he beat um, Bill Meddy, um by first round knockout, second round knockout. It was an emphatic knockout before that. Obviously, he beat Miguel Vasquez. He kind of battered him for four or five rounds before stopping him. And we saw Vasquez recently before that. You know, he gave Ritson hell, beat him, um, but didn't get the didn't get the decision. You know how 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 good is Gary Cully? What's his level? Where where do you see him? You know, in twelve months' time, because I for one can see him being, I could for one see him being Ireland's next world champion. I think he's absolutely sensational. I do not know how he makes lightweight. I don't know how he makes one hundred and thirty five pounds. I think he's a brilliant fighter. And um, I just kind of want to get your thoughts on: is this straightforward, probably stoppage here for Cully? And if so, where does he go the rest of the year? Uh, thank you very much, Paul. Very detailed, very detailed focus there on your uh, Irish Irish cohort. I think um, I'm very impressed by Gary Cully, frankly. Like, you know, I've watched his last couple of fights. And again, it's like um, Fundora and like Callum Smith. You look at him and think, how have you boiled down to that weight? Frankly, like, it's just outrageous. Um, but obviously has the power at that weight as well. Like you said, like first round KO last time out. Um, looking at it, yeah, I do see a Cully KO victory. Obviously carries power. I see another win. Um, possibly not as early as the last time out but i can see him i can see him stopping this guy frankly somewhere sort of like six to six to eight somewhere around that sort of range um where do i see him going frankly it's like you said it's lightweight it's a hell of a division um he's gonna have to come through some names to become um a world champion there but frankly i don't see any reason why he can't sort of climb up and be sort of even in the sort of top five sort of area of their various sort of um governing bodies for that sort of for that sort of position i don't see any sort of I was intercontinental champion now, so could actually step up and you know, um, I think he's yeah, it's definitely step up to sort of top ten, but even sort of top five, top six level in the ranking bodies, and then sort of take a shoot out from there. I mean, obviously, given you know the names of like Loma, Cruz, Haney, all those kind of guys, Davis, Garcia kicking around, it's hard to put him kind of above those. But I definitely see sort of from maybe if you put Cambosis in there as well around sort of five six. Maybe I can see Cully easily being in sort of six to ten. I think he'd be he'd be in there, and also he'd give. With his pure size, he gives all those fighters a hell of a hell of a fight. Frankly, yeah, it's definitely interesting. I think you you know it's interesting. You mentioned someone like Cambosis there, who's obviously at that world level, despite losing his last two convincingly to Devon Haney. But you know, who's to say in twelve months' time, you know, that's not a that's not a you know a world a world title um eliminator, something mm. like you know. So let's be honest. Why, if you unless you get ordered to fight Gary Cully, why are you going to fight him? Because you're mm. just like this guy is absolutely huge. I do not want any of him. He's also an absolute freak in terms of fitness. I know he puts up all of his times and stuff of his 10Ks and he's running 10Ks in 35 minutes and all this here. <laughs> um, it's absolutely ridiculous. He's he's fit as a fiddle. He carries power. Yeah, I think he's kind of he kind of got it all. And I can see him as being another big year in the progression of the career of Gary Cully for sure. No, I can as well. And actually, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing Gary Cully fight because it is always exciting. 
Um, but talking about excitement, unfortunately, we're going to have to draw an end to the to the excitement that we've hopefully given you over the course of this uh, 10, 15 minutes, how long we've been here. Um, but just wanted to say, obviously, yeah, check out, obviously, the, the card we've been talking about taking place on Saturday. Uh, we'll have some other content coming back off the back of this. Obviously, we'll have interviews, as as Paul already said, you know, we've got interviews coming. Um, and we obviously with Lee Wood uh, and various other, various other fighters on the card, various other features and previews. Check those out um, and breakdowns. But for now, I'm going to have to say, Paul, I bid you farewell. Uh, bid our viewers farewell if there's anything you'd like to add sir or, or would you like to similarly say goodbye and we'll see you again next week yeah just looking forward to this weekend's card and yeah I'm talking to you again this time next week um, Elliot thanks everyone for watching and yeah speak to you all again soon